Hello everyone, welcome to this new video series on how to make your own video game. In these series of videos, we are going to learn how to build your own tool in order to generate images for your game, such as characters, equipments, armors, and then we are going to take those assets and bring it into a game engine in order to make a full game. I will divide the video series into two parts. Phase one will be about making our own tools in order to generate images or any other assets. Those can be swords, characters, make them the face portrait or even the enemies. Then we'll go into phase two where I'm going to use the Gudu game engine to build the game. Now, I do not have any experience working with Gudu game engine. I choose the Godot game engine because first, it's a challenge. Second, I want to show you that even if you don't know the software, it's actually very easy to get started, especially in 2024. With all the resources available, you should not hold back. If you have a project, go for it. Now, this video series was inspired by my nephew who asked me this question how to make games. And then the next thing that he asked me was how to make shield, how to make characters, equipments, and so on. Now at this stage, I had a good idea of how I would approach this problem. As my daily driver, I use stable diffusion, mainly the Comfy UI interface. But if I had to explain Comfy UI to a 10 year old, it would get complicated really fast. So what I thought about is making a friendly user interface that he can access from anywhere. But basically you just have two different components. The top part will display the image and the bottom bar is where we can just type in an image of a hero. What's happening in the back is that our application will communicate with Comfy UI using the Comfy UI API. And then Comfy UI will send those images back into the application. This way we are abstracting the complexity and the user does not see this complexity there. An example would be female character portrait. We submit that. It goes through our workflow. The workflow will automatically add certain keywords into the prompt. This will help make the images consistent in a particular art direction or art style. The model will take the prompt, generate an image, and then we are going to do some phase detection on that image. Once we've detected the image, we can cut out the face to get a face portrait. We can add different elements showcasing what is the type of that character. So I was thinking in the line of making an RPG type of game where the characters will be in a fantasy land and they can use fire, water, earth, or air, similar to Avatar The Last Airbender. And everything will be done in the back end. We'll just have four different characters that we can choose from. Next, we can use our interface to generate background, place the character in there, in this case, the face portrait. We can add certain UI element to make it look good. If you don't like the fire element in this case, we can switch it to a water element. And if you want to tell a story, we can have our character. As you can see, the background is already cut out. We can add a text box to show text. So throughout these series, I'm going to be writing the code, making the workflows alongside you. So this is the plan for now. I'm thinking about a very simple application where we have a couple of tabs at the top. If you select the first tab, we get our basic interface, just a text prompt, and we get an image back. It's called a text to image workflow. Then if we go into the next tab, we get an image to image workflow. Basically, we upload an image on our own application. This image gets passed to the model. We have the Comfy UI workflow in the back end. And then out will come a similar image, but slightly different. So we can maintain the same alt star, but get variation to choose from. Now, similarly, we can have a third tab to maybe remove the background, the fourth tab to do the face portrait, 
and so on. So our application is going to communicate with the backend and the backend will also communicate back with our front end. In order to do this, we are going to use WebSockets. We'll also be using Gradio on the channel. I already have two or three videos on Gradio and I also have a video on using the Comfy UI API. We are just going to build on top of that to make our application. Now, like I mentioned, my daily driver is Stable Diffusion and I communicate with a Stable Diffusion using the Comfy UI. For our application, we are going to use the Comfy UI API. If you have a different front end for with Stable Diffusion, you can use that. The process is going to be the same. However, Comfy UI gives us the ability to customize the workflow. So we can have a specific workflow for a character, another workflow for enemies. And then depending on which tab the user is interacting with, we are going to generate that particular character and mean, or maybe equipments. Now finally, we will talk a little bit about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in case we need to modify the Gradio application. Maybe create a dark theme, uh, add a little bit of settings, change the position of the layout manually then we can touch on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, I do not want to get ahead of ourselves, but if we reach a point where the existing model is not performing well for our use case, we may have to train a model. From my testing, I found out that the face recognition model I use to get this output, basically detect the face and then create a padding around the face. It worked really well with human faces, so realistic faces, but uh, it had a hard time detecting the face if I was going with a pixelated character style or if the character style was too plain or anime-like. If we do reach that point where the model is not performing correctly, then we can go and train on our own data set. Now that said, I highly recommend you to follow along with these videos that's to come. At the end of phase one, you will have an application that will be able to generate images. If you do not want to generate images for a game, you can modify your workflow so that you can generate images for novels or light novels, books, children books. If you want to start up your own business, maybe sell stickers online, you can generate images for that. You simply have your personal interface to interact with a stable diffusion. Now, at the end of these two, you will have a demo game. We're going to have the characters, will implement a movement, any battle. All of that will be handled in phase two. So if you complete both phase one and phase two, you will have an application and a game that you can show on your portfolio. With that said, this was just an introduction on what we will be covering as we go through the different videos. I hope you are as excited as I am and that we'll continue to follow this series. So thank you for watching until the very end. I hope to see you in the next one. Take care, have a nice day.